Chapter six of Lyrical Ballads, seventeen ninety eight, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Verity Kendall. Goody Blake and Harry Gill, a true story. Oh, what's the matter? What's the matter? What is to that ails young Harry Gill that evermore his teeth they chatter? chatter 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 still of waistcoats harry has no lack good duffel grey and flannel fine he hath a blanket on his back and coats enough to smother nine in march december and in july tis all the same with harry gill the neighbours tell and tell you truly his teeth they chatter chatter still at night at morning and at noon till all the same with harry gill beneath the sun beneath the moon his teeth they chatter chatter still young harry was a lusty drover and who so stout of limb as he his cheeks were red as ruddy clover his voice was like the voice of three old goody blake was old and poor ill-fed she was and thinly clad and any man who passed her door might see how poor a hut she had all day she spun in her poor dwelling and then her three hours work at night alas twas hardly worth the telling it would not pay for candlelight this woman dwelt in dorsetshire her hut was on a cold hillside and in that country coals are dear for they come far by wind and tide by the same fire to boil their pottage two poor old dames as i have known will often live in one small cottage but she poor woman dwelt alone twas well enough when summer came the long warm lightsome summer day that at her door the canty dame would sit as any linnet gay but when the ice our streams did fetter oh then how her old bones would shake you would have said if you had met her twas a hard time for goody blake her evenings then were dull and dead sad case it was as you may think for very cold to go to bed and then for cold not sleep a wink oh joy for her when e'er in winter the winds at night had made a rout and scattered many a lusty splinter and many a rotten bough about yet never had she well or sick as every man who knew her says a pile beforehand wood or stick enough to warm her for three days now when the frost was past enduring and made her old bones to ache could anything be more alluring than an old hedge to goody blake and now and then it must be said when her old bones were cold and chill she left her fire or left her bed to seek the hedge of harry gill now harry had long suspected this trespass of old goody blake and vowed that she should be detected and he on her would vengeance take and oft from his warm fire he'd go and to the fields his road would take and there at night in frost and snow he watched to seize old goody blake and once behind a rick of barley thus looking out did harry stand the moon was full and shining clearly and crisp with frost the stubble land he hears a noise he's all awake again on tiptoe down the hill he softly creeps tis goody blake she's at the hedge of harry gill right glad was he when he beheld her stick after stick did goody pull he stood behind a bush of elder till she had filled her apron full when with her load she turned about the by-road back again to take he started forward with a shout and sprang upon poor goody blake and fiercely by the arm he took her and by the arm he held her fast and fiercely by the arm he shook her and cried i've caught you then at last then goody who had nothing said the bundle from her lap let fell and kneeling on the sticks she prayed to god that is the judge of all she prayed her withered hand uprearing while harry held her by the arm god who art never out of hearing oh may he never more be warm the cold cold moon above her head thus on her knees did goody pray young harry gill heard what she said and icy cold he turned away he went complaining all the morrow that he was cold and very chill his face was gloom his heart was sorrow alas that day for harry gill that day he wore a riding coat but not a whit the warmer he another was on thursday brought and ere the sabbath he had three twas all in vain a useless matter and blankets were about him pinned yet still his jaws and teeth they clatter like a loose casement in the wind and harry's flesh it fell away and all who see him say it is plain that live as long as live he may he never will be warm again no word to any man he utters a bed or up to young or old but ever to himself he mutters poor harry gill is very cold a bed or up by night or day his teeth they chatter chatter still now think ye farmers all i pray of goody blake and harry gill end of goody blake and harry gill recording by verity kendall